Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my table. My name is Robert, otherwise known as Birdman, one of the legends of Nirvana. And this is our last game that we played for Geek Week. And so this is my cousin Chris uh, from in out of town who was gracious enough to allow me to play, play with me some games that I may not have been able to really get on the table anytime soon with uh, Randrak and Dragon Mother. So uh, a lot of the adventure type board games. So a little bit longer, a little bit... Um, I don't know, just less likely to come out on the board at, at their house. So really got really appreciate this opportunity. So the last game that we are going to review is Hero Quest. Hero Quest. That's right. So now that this is the most modern version of Hero Quest, but from I don't own the original Hero Quest Games Workshop copy. This guy does though. But hit your copy's opened, right? Oh yeah. Where Randy, uh, he uh, actually has an unopened copy that's still in shrink wrap. So uh, that's worth quite a bit of money. Randy just got to be cooler than everybody yeah, else. I know. It. Gosh. He is like that. That guy. So um, I was able to get a pretty good deal on this, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. So before we get started, please make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and that like button down on the bottom, just so that we can make sure that you will be notified of any of the videos that we do from this point forward. And so speaking of Hero Quest, this originally came out in 1989, it was originally done by Milton Bradley with Games Workshop. This version is just straight up Milton Bradley. Right. Um, overall ranking is 598 with a ranking with with it rated at 7.2. It plays two to five. Designed by Stephen Baker, art by Gary Chalk and Max Dunbar and Les Edwards. Published again originally by Games Workshop and Milton Bradley. Where this version, where they actually, I don't know if it originally came out on Kickstarter or if they just released it, but it did finally come out in 2021. And uh, this is the version I got. So depending on where you go, it will determine how much it costs. So I've seen for the most part, just the base game is around 149 bucks. Um, there are two official expansions that's came out for it so far. And so I actually have both of those. And so my copy was 200 bucks, but I got both expansions with it. So I think I got, it came out a little bit on top as far as that goes. Um, honestly, I was not part of the initial backing of the uh, Hero Quest, so I don't know how much uh, it was charged for the re-release. That's how much I, uh, I spent for it, but I think I got a pretty good deal. So, all right, let's go into components. So, I rank the components at an 8, and the reason why is because although it's got some really cool minis, um, really cool heroes, it's got some neat stuff to put on the board that just adds a lot of flavor to the rooms that you can go in and discover, Everything else, the cardboard and all that, is just not that great. Uh, the cards are slick. They don't have a linen finish, fairly thin. Um, the cardboard that kind of separates hallways and stuff, very thin, not a high quality. Um, the, the board itself is still pretty thin. It just kind of feels like they took the stuff from the original version without upgrading it at all. It's like the original components, just not that old right and so like they remade it but with the same quality they did in 1989 and they should know a whole lot better and the other part that i, that I went down in eight is that you got really cool stuff with stuff that's not so cool and it's like man if you're going to invest the time and the effort to do really cool minis open doors versus closed doors and fireplaces and sarcophagi and all this cool stuff you could have went another extra step and made the cardboard board a little bit thicker the cards a linen finish or maybe even uh like the like ceramic tiles for the for the room tiles stuff like that well yeah this game had a lot of nostalgia hype around it absolutely in the 3d printing community which i'm part of uh there's been a probably ever since they announced the kickstarter there has been this huge push to make other miniatures, because one of the things about Hero Quest that we'll get into long later is the fact it had the intention of you being able to use the game past what the original developers desired. So people were making all kinds of sculpts and molds and everything else that honestly were better than some of the ones that appeared in here. Uh, in fact, as I'm reminiscing about it, many of these sculpts, while they're different than the ones that came with the game's work workshop version, by and large, I don't know what the original Milton Bradley version looked like, but to be honest with you, 
I, I wasn't super impressed. I mean, the sculpts are nice. I would certainly paint them in my copy, which I know I can hear people screaming now that that's going to ruin the value of the game and everything else. But honestly, if I wanted to buy a game from 1989, I'd buy a game from 1989. To, to go this long... Now, I did look up some information. I don't know if you were aware of this, but COVID did impact... COVID sure. shipments and processing did impact the shipments of this stuff. And so some of the pieces that were being made by other manufacturers ended up having to go to a different manufacturer due to complications from COVID. Uh, and I think that any game that's produced in this 2019 through 2021 era is going to be fraught with those kind of problems. Right. But again, this is Hero's Quest. This is something that people talked the, about. The hype train for this game Oh, it was, was off the rails. So, yeah, so huge. I wanted it so bad because I didn't have the original Games Workshop Milton Bradley copy. And I've always wanted to play it because it just looks so cool. And so I just jumped at the chance to buy it and because it's a grail game to me. Um, but we'll talk about some other stuff here in just a minute. Sure. So it's a big fat but. So um, again, it's an eight for me. You scored it. I scored the eight as well. I mean, okay. the minis are solid. Uh, they obviously spent more attention and detail on the player models. They look like Citadel sculpts for the most part. They did a good job with them. There is some high level of detail. They made them multicolor, similar to how Descent does it mm -hmm. for designation of different creatures. So if you don't want to paint them, you don't have to. You don't have to. Um, you know, you've got a, a sort of a theme that runs through with the different creatures and stuff. But it, even in that... You know, I feel like the skeletons were kind of phoned in. I mean, they're cool, but they're not that cool. The zombies are, you know, you have to really look at them to distinguish them as zombies. They almost look like another form of skeletons. But some of them look really good. Oh, yeah. Like the gargoyle and the abominations yeah. look really cool. Because um, I guess they couldn't use uh, Sawagan or uh, Merfolk as a term, so they call yeah. them abominations. Um, the dice... You have, you know, your standard pip dice, and then you have dice that your have... attack dice. Your attack dice that have a defense, a skull, which is a hit, and... It's it's like an attack and a, and a defense for humans, and attack and defense for the monster. Right, yeah. Um, nothing special there. Like, they didn't even engrave them. The symbols are stamped on. Yeah. So, I mean, again, better than stickers. Yes, but, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know... But for for a hundred and I mean a hundred and fifty dollar game, you're paying for the plastic in the minis. You, you are. are, but but you know, and you do get a lot of plastic for sure. But for a hundred fifty bucks, I, I just I, I would think I would get a little bit more. The, the, How much is your nostalgia worth? Is what it comes down to. Pretty much, and yeah. the fact that it's a grill game. So you know, I, I'm buying the grill game. All right, so moving on to theme. So I'm giving this game a seven. Um, and the main reason why it, it feels dated, so you can just, it feels like a 1989 game. Um, it's very standard fantasy, uh, old school D and D feel to it. Um, the uh, reason why I did give it a seven and not even less is because there is a good app implementation. So they got some voice acting that, uh, for the mentor and for some of the, the bosses that you go to. And I like that. So that kind of upped it up a little bit thematically for me with music and stuff like that, that always adds to it. The story seems like it's going to be a pretty good story, but it's, uh, it, other than that, it, it's just very, very generic fantasy. Um, I gave it a six, and that's because, again, I felt like you had so much buildup. Why wasn't there more quest-oriented stuff? You know, even the voice acting, it was good, but it was repetitive. Like, every time you came to a turn where there was nothing for the monsters, the Zargon, I think was his name or something, just made some vague threat at you, yeah. or, you know, basically laughed at you for being dumb heroes. Uh... You know, the app did do one thing for us. It did help us figure out uh, that we at first we couldn't figure out what happened on Zargon's turn. Right. If there was no monsters inside, you know, the but room it wasn't just open. immediately skips his turn. Yeah, it just skips his turn. You know, he that's where he makes his threat yeah. at you. 
And so the just to reiterate the app and the reason why one of the reasons why I like it is because it turns it into a multiplayer game instead of one person having to play as Zargon. Right. So if you don't have the app, one person has to be the bad guy. He has to be Zargon. He'll control the monsters. And that might be fun. I don't want to take away from that. Sure. But I do like playing with everyone. And so um so you can go either direction. So again, kind of feels like descent in that regards too because you can do the same thing the overlord but the descent app and the the um house well, no mansion uh, yeah mansions of madness mansions of madness and, and stuff. the lord of the rings they're uh, far all, more robust all the fantasy flight uh app integrations yeah they, they are so they did fantasy flight did an amazing job on their app i mean this is well i'll get into that when we actually talk so theme you gave it a six it looks like i gave it a six and i gave it a seven all, all right, right so rule book um Actually, I want to change my score because now that I'm reading it, thinking about it, and just it's just it's it's very plain Jane. It's functional, does everything it needs to do, but that's all it does. And so it's not any better than a Catan's, but it does have some at, it's some pictures in it. So I'm going to give it a six. You know what? I'm going to spot change mine to the same as well, only because yeah, I was trying to think of a way to say it. It doesn't do again. That could have been a chance to add some theme. It could have been a chance. Yeah, there could be some more lore in it. There could have been like some cheeky humor written something. in there. Something. Something to give some feel to this world of Heroes Quest. I mean, it's supposed to be this cool world, but who the heck is Argon? Yeah. Why do I care? I mean, I'll get a little blurb, but that's I mean, about there's it. There's some information about. Yeah, it, but, but it's light. It's not anything more than again I would expect from a game of the '80s. You know, maybe. And so there's 10 quests that come with the base uh, game. And then there's, I think, maybe 10 more for each of the others. But I'm not for sure. Yeah. But I, I think where where this game could really shine is what you alluded to. And that's all the fan-made stuff. Yeah. And so, and I have looked up. And so, like, all the fan-made stuff for the original Hero Quest is compatible for this version of the game. Because this is the original game. Right. It's just a remake of it, a reprint of it, basically. Uh, but you do have to, like, print specific tiles for it. Right. You have to print out the materials for it. But I like that idea. Because that's it's kind of like Forgotten Realm, or... Um, uh, it's Forgotten Realms, but it's the Neverwinter PC game. Mm -hmm. I love that game mainly because of all the fan made versions. Right. You're talking of about mods. the original Neverwinter yeah. Nights? Yeah. Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2, that right. they both made all the cool DD stuff that we played through as a kid as playable versions right. of Neverwinter. I love worlds. that. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. So, um, Roba, functional, six, but nothing exceptional about it. All right, so now we're moving on to gameplay. So, uh, you go ahead and go first. Well, the gameplay was boring to me. You know, it's very cut and dry. And to be fair, when you're, you know, it's, I normally would review role-playing games. And I try to look at it from the eye view of the time it was made and, you know, today's standard. And give both opinions. Well, they were rehashing this. The fact that this is your board and this is it. And you're just going to be moving doors around and, and placements around. But it's this board. Now, one of the things, the 3D printing thing, as he said, the fans have been doing is, they. I remember when they, they had the Kickstarter, the fans actually complained on the Kickstarter, we don't just want the cardboard board. Give us some modularity. Let right. us move things around. Well, and I think that's why HeroScape did really good, well, really sure. good on is that you got the t uh, 3D terrain that you can put on the board that really makes that come alive. And then that's modular where you can move it around. I think that would have been amazing if they would have done something like that with this. And the, the what I was able to find, I found one thread where there was a official response from the developers and they said... If they were to do that, it would raise the price point to well over $300. I think people would have paid it. I think people would have paid it too, because the people that were paying $150 for this were paying for the nostalgia. Yeah. And they're people that are, honestly, they're our age. We've got some disposable income right. where, okay, if this is my purchase, honey, can I get this for Christmas, you know? Well, even then, you, you know, if you do the Kickstarter right, you could still put this out for 150, but do add all the terrain add-ons sure. and all that other stuff, and you know, do a total cool mini or not uh, campaign, and just spend as much as you want for all the add-ons. So again, I gave it a six because it really felt phoned in. I felt like they're cashing in on the nostalgia cow, and and I, I just I have an, an issue with that. You have a chance to make this better and add to something that was already iconic, and you blew it. 
Um, I do agree. I do think that they just reprinted the base game just to try and make a buck. Mm -hmm. Um, But I gave it a seven. And so, and the reason why I went up a little bit is because even though they did that, at least they picked a game that was well loved and it needed to be reprinted because you cannot find a copy of the original version for less than three, four, five hundred bucks. And so it was not financially feasible for me to find the original copy of the game. Where now that it's much more reasonable and it's everything that I would have got if I'd have bought the original 1989 version, it's just not as collectible. And so. So, question of the hour though. Knowing what this is, if let's say you, you won, you know, big, you won 10 grand or something, okay? Now you got the mad money to run out and buy a game. Mm-hmm. Would you have bought the original at three or four hundred dollars? Yeah. This is what you got. Yeah, because especially if I knew that I'm not getting anything unique or different about it. Okay, I would rather want the collectible side of it. But unlike others, I would open it up and play it if it was sealed because I. It's collectible to me. That's and how it's tough fun you to are. me. But yeah, but you know, that, that that's the way I roll. You're, so. you're a board game gangster. That's right. That's right. And I would totally, but I would totally open it and I would totally pay it. Um, just because that's the true Grail game. This is a remake of the Grail game. I mean, honestly, I played mine. I used the minis for Dungeons and Dragons. I used the board for Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid because I didn't have anything better. I painted my miniatures up. I will hopefully never show pictures of those paint jobs <laughs> because all I had was a tester's paint kit and oh God, it's pretty bad. But you know, if I had, I'm missing like two doors and one or two tiles, I think. I don't know where they went, but if I could find them, you know, I probably would have sent it to Robert, honestly, because it's just sitting on my shelf doing nothing. But the fact that it's not complete, I knew would tarnish the grail experience. Well, you still can't because I could just use my pieces to replace it. Oh, okay. There you go. Maybe I will. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> Just but, so you can show Randy, well, this is what it looks like opened. That's right. Aren't you jealous? Aren't you jealous? Aren't you jealous, Randy? Aren't you jealous? <laughs> so um, I gave it a seven just because even though I agree it's all dated and it feels dated, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I didn't go any higher because you're right. They, I think they missed an opportunity to really push us out of the park and really make it something nostalgic for the new generation mm-hmm. as well, not just nostalgic for the people that would that knew of it originally. So Yep. So all right. Well there you go. That's our review of Hero Quest. I'll probably still keep playing it because I again I think the interesting the story was interesting enough for me. I want to go through it. But it's not the gameplay that won me over. It's the more the story than anything. So uh that's Hero Quest for you. Thank you and uh Make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button so you can uh, see more videos from the Legends of Nirvana. Thank you. And this is our last game for Geek Week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.